What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another edition of Cars Tech. Now this is a little bit of a special one. This is gonna be a two-parter because we're taking a look at the all new 2022 Chevy Silverado. Now this thing is absolutely packed to the brim with technology and I didn't wanna try and cram it all into one video. So we're gonna break it into two. In this video, we're gonna be talking mainly about the digital display here, which is new for Chevrolet and then their updated infotainment system here, which is much larger. It's about 13.4 inches. The digital display is about 12.3 inches. So in the next video, we're gonna be taking a look at all the other technology. So the rear view mirror camera, the bed cam, the surround vision system, uh, the wireless charging pad, the outlets, and just all the technology in here, just to name a few of the things. Also, we'll be doing a full review of the 2022 Chevy Silverado over on my Bachman channel. So if you're interested in more of just a, an, a full overview of what you get on this model, head on over to the Bachman Auto Group channel and hit subscribe so you don't miss that video. It may be out when this one is. I'm not entirely sure when I'll be publishing them, but there will be a full review over there. So definitely head on over there if you're interested in that but let's get into it. So like I said, this is the 2022 Chevy Silverado. The trim we're looking at here is the RST trim, but we'll also be kind of looking at the high country in the next video. So uh, just so you know what trim level we're dealing with here, this is their newest system with Google built right into it. So you'll notice a lot of Google influences and also a lot of the different apps that you find in this system are just straight up Google apps, Google Assistant, the Google Play Store, things like that. We'll take a look at all that in just a second. And then the digital display here, this 12.3 inch fully digital gauge cluster. We have never had this before on a Silverado. We've had a, a partial digital cluster before, but never a fully digital display cluster. You can also get it on the Tahoe, the Suburban. I'm sure this digital display will continue on into all future Chevrolet models. You already have a fully digital display on the Chevy Bolt, which I have plenty of videos on if you're interested, hit the card above. But this is a whole different system. This is much more like a traditional, uh, something you'd see like in a Volkswagen or in a Hyundai or something like that, just a fully digital gauge cluster. But this is really important because it makes the way for the upcoming Silverado EV, which of course will have a fully digital display cluster as almost all EVs do, if I'm not mistaken. This is a huge innovation for the Silverado and we get to see it here on the 2022. So it'll start you off with owner registration. So I'm not gonna do that obviously because I don't own this vehicle. We'll just stay in demo mode. We should be able to access just about everything outside of maybe some personalization features and things like that. So you're greeted with a little bit of a split screen look here. Now this is a big display, 13.4 inches, the largest display we've ever seen in a Chevrolet vehicle. So we'll start with the audio menu. And this is pretty self-explanatory as you would figure AM, FM, Sirius XM, Bluetooth, Google News, podcast, and then you can also connect via a USB and play audio off of that. Now, since I am using the guest mode, I don't think it's having me sign in to my Google account. Whereas if you were to set this up as your own vehicle, it would probably have you sign in to your Google account and that's how you would get access to, if you go to podcasts and things or Google News, it would populate according to what your Google settings are or show your podcast and things like that. But your maps look exactly like Google Maps have always looked. It's a pretty responsive system. Now, I always question whether that's uh, the processing done on the back end here, whether it's the Wi-Fi connection, it could be a couple different things, but this is, it's fairly responsive. It reacts to, you know, two finger gestures, two finger rotate um, to spin around and then three finger doesn't do anything. So it's mostly a two finger input. Then you can search for all your, you know, Starbucks or addresses or whatever you want to do. You can zoom in and out with these buttons, but you can also zoom in and out just with pinching. Voice button to where you can dictate. Show me the nearest Starbucks. Boom, pops right up with some Starbucks options and you can just, one mile away, and you can just press, start your navigation. You can also call the place you're trying to uh, get to. So if you wanna call and hold a spot in line or something like that at a restaurant, you can do that right from the Google Maps menu. And so yes, once you start the navigation on this display, it will appear on your digital display cluster as well. I don't think you can do what Volkswagen does where you can put the entire map onto the digital display cluster, but nonetheless, 
you can get your turn by turn directions. And then, like I said, if you close out of the maps menu, it will keep your turn by turn directions over on the right side, and then you can put whatever else you want in the center. So we're dealing with about nine inches worth of screen real estate where Apple CarPlay is actually taking up the screen. And then you have an additional probably like three or four inches worth of your side by side navigation or audio or whatever you want to put in there. So the largest version of Apple CarPlay that you've ever had on a Silverado here, which is awesome. And uh, of course, CarPlay looks awesome. You have all your standard phone, music, audio books, maps, messages, uh, my Chevrolet, I've got like Overcast and WhatsApp and Waze and all kinds of awesome functionality. And it looks great on this display. Now let's take a look at the camera menu. So this is going to be a little bit limited here on this specific trim level, which is the RST. Up on the high country, which we'll take a look at in the next video, we will have the ability to see the surround vision camera system as well as the bed camera. But here on the RST, we only have a standard rear view camera and hitch view camera. It's not the most extensive uh, cameraing system here, unfortunately, uh, especially here on the RST. But again, we'll be taking a look at that more in the next video when we talk about the high country. Next, you have your Google Assistant. So if you just push this, you can ask it anything. Hey Google, tell me a joke. Favorite karate move? A pork chop. <laughs> Dang, it's even got pig noises. So next, the trailering menu here. This is going to let you use a guest trailer, import from your My Chevrolet account if you've already got a trailer set up, or we can add a new one. And it's gonna give you a checklist, maintenance as well, and then you can connect lights if your trailer has lights, and you can control all of that in here. And then when it's connected, you can use the split screen functionality to uh, see what your trailer status is. Now, of course, I don't have a trailer connected, but if I did, I'd be able to see all of it there. Now, inside of the climate control menu, you can turn the climate on and then you can control fan speed by hitting these buttons here. You can change the position where you want it to actually come out. Then there's arrows for temperature up and down for both sides. One thing you cannot do from this climate control menu is control your heated or ventilated seats. That you would have to do with these buttons down here. Then you have your Wi-Fi hotspot, which all new Chevrolets have a built-in 4G LTE Wi-Fi hotspot. You do have to pay for it after your free trial. Now you do have Google News and podcasts, but again, those aren't gonna do anything because I'm using a guest account. It's not gonna let me sign in with my Google account to be able to access that. But if you were signed in, it would just pull all of your data right to the display. You'd be able to use all those different apps very easily. So I was finally able to get the app store to log in here, you know, using one of my actual accounts. So you can see that under the Google Play Store, you're gonna have a limited amount of apps that you can actually download for your vehicle. That's that's to be expected. You're not gonna be able to download like, you know, YouTube, Netflix, all that kind of stuff. These are more apps that are designed specifically with the um, kind of Android OS car system that uh, GM is using here. Uh, apps that are written specifically to work with that. So uh, you can go to explore all apps here and you can see kind of what I'm talking about. It's mostly audiobooks. Uh, podcasts, uh, music, things like that. So Spotify, YouTube, music, obviously Google Play and audiobooks, NPR, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio. Uh, I've even heard of some of these Google Maps, things like that. So these are not just, this is not like Tesla where you can watch Netflix in your car or anything like that. These are apps that are specifically designed for the in-vehicle infotainment system. So again, your experience is going to be somewhat limited. And if you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto or things like that, you probably won't use this anyway, but I just wanted to show you guys kind of what it looked like. And that's pretty much everything here on this display. Now let's move on over briefly to the 12.3 inch digital display cluster. Now you have all your standard uh, speed gauge, your RPMs, you have your coolant temp, you have your range, you have how much gas you have, what gear you're in, how fast you're going at the top, what the speed limit is on the road that you're on. Like I said, you can do your turn by turn navigation up there. You can use these arrows to switch through. If you have a phone connected, you can do things like place phone calls. You can change the info on the gauges. You can do tire pressure, fuel economy, transmission fluid. And then you have some different display layouts. And I'm always a huge fan of these because I love the customization. So this is classic here. Progressive has a nice little transition animation and it gives you a, a little bit more of a formed uh, look to kind of match your display. So it's a little more angular, kind of fits the curves of the display. That's really neat digital here that's going to give you a very very minimalist display so just uh, no gauges whatsoever just vehicle information on both sides that again can be fully customized and then clean i'm guessing we'll just have your speed right in the center yeah so that i love and i really wish my chevy bolt had this because i would run this all the time so this is just 
You can put uh, no info on either side. It's basically just your display and that's it. Also, you do have adaptive cruise control here. So if you set that up, you can change your gap adjust. So a ton of great vehicle information on this display. I love the fact that it's fully digital and I love the fact that we're moving into an era where you don't have analog things at all. That's just my preference. I know some people don't agree, but that's just what I tend to lean towards is having as little analog stuff as possible. I think it just looks way nicer, way more premium, but you guys can be the judge of that for yourself. So that's pretty much everything for part one of this video. Again, we'll be back with part two, talking about every other technology feature here inside the 2022 Chevy Silverado. So if you enjoyed the video, drop a like, leave a comment down below, letting me know what your favorite feature is on this new updated system. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss every single new video the second I hit publish. We'll see you in part two.